Hello everybody. Another weekend upon us. Another uh, great opportunity to go camping. Wanted to get the trailer back out again for the second weekend just to test out some things that I learned from the last one. Uh, some things that were lacking. So had a couple of comments about um, things like the AC and a couple other areas that I just wanted to kind of point out today and hopefully that'll give you guys some additional insight into you know the capabilities of this thing, how this thing works, and uh, some of the areas that you might want to invest in depending on uh, your preference. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to mention is the um, permethrin insect repellent and how you can leverage this to kind of hose down your awning. This is actually a trick I got from the outdoor, outdoor gear review guy. Um, he mentioned that he hoses down all of his camping gear with this stuff and it, it keeps the bugs away. And uh, I took him up on that and actually hosed down my tent and a few other things a while back and he was right. It actually reduced the amount of bugs that would crawl all over your stuff. So first thing I did, uh, well thing out here is I grabbed a bottle of this and uh, actually sprayed down the awning uh, to kind of help keep the bugs away from that um, at night, which uh, you know, it takes a while to dry out. If you're unfamiliar with how to use this stuff, I uh, encourage you to seek out his video. It's the Outdoor Gear Review. He'll talk about kind of the way to apply this and how long you need to wait before you use your gear and all that good stuff. So just a tip if you're interested uh, from a bug control perspective that the permethrin stuff works pretty well um, and I highly uh, recommend it. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next thing I want to talk about. So the next thing I want to talk about is the lighting. Uh, you know, as you guys know, I opted for the lighting package, which puts LED lights in pretty much every cabinet and the uh, the rock lights, uh, apparently underneath the frame, which is nice. Uh, the challenge is, is you only get one choice of color, and that color is white. Uh, and the problem with that is that, you know, it can attract bugs. Now, cool white LEDs attract less bugs than, say, yellow or red. Uh, but they still do attract bugs and when you're trying to shower at night, especially if you don't have the shower enclosure yet, which I don't uh, It can be a little annoying to have June bugs and stuff lying all over you now to be fair uh, When I was last weekend when I was by a body of water I had a lot of bugs or at least a significant amount that I was a little bit annoyed with uh, Since I've moved locations and I'm no longer near a body of water this thing actually performed pretty well last night I didn't have hardly any bugs being attracted to the light so your mileage may vary, but it's something that I've actually provided feedback to uh, off-grid about. I'm like, man, it'd be really nice if we could have an option of yellow or red and being able to, uh, you know, it'd be cool if we could have a tri-light, right? Where you could actually flip a switch and go from white to, to yellow to red, depending on what you need it for. Uh, or at the very least, give us an option to choose different colors for the main activity area. So like the shower area here, it'd be nice to have red light. Um, yellow light near the sink. Those are two areas that we're gonna be operating in mostly. So um, give us an option for additional lighting. Um, so that's one annoyance. Um, showering with June bugs flying all over you is not a good idea or not, not a fun experience for anybody that's not uh, comfortable with bugs being out in the wild. But uh, the other thing I want to point out about lighting that you need to be aware of is the porch light. So let's talk about that. So each one of these doors has a really nice porch light. This thing is bright. If you're on the inside and you hear something outside the cabin and you want to look, flip on a light and you're, uh, you're able to see for quite a while. Uh, and both sides have this. Um, it's a nice feature, but as you can probably imagine, if you're leaving it on while you're outside of the trailer, it will attract bugs. And the next thing you know, when you try to get into your cabin, it's going to be pulling those bugs inside with you. So I usually leave these porch lights off and only use them if I need to spot what's going on outside. Um, otherwise, they'll attract bugs and bring stuff into your trailer. These are also white, so they don't attract too many bugs. Uh, at least that's not what they're supposed to. But they still attract enough that you're worried about them getting into the cabin with you. And it's uh, never a fun thing to have bugs flying around when you're trying to sleep. So that's a, another area that uh, I like to point out that you, you know, your mileage may vary from an experience perspective. And the final thing I wanted to show was the Zero Breeze AC unit and how it installs within the trailer itself. I did have a comment suggesting that this thing won't fit with a battery on it and that you have to, you're forced to plug it in. Well, unfortunately, that's well. Fortunately, that's not true. Um, and I learned that on day one. You literally, you do have to detach the battery, which uh, it can be a little bit annoying, but it's actually not a bad thing. Um, so the battery sits right next to it, and it's still plugged in. So there's a cable that runs from the AC unit to the battery. So you can stack these. You can actually have multiple batteries if you want, powering your AC unit without ever having to charge it. Uh, I'm sorry, without ever having to plug it in. Now there is some plugs on the back side of this 
and you can plug it in if you want. Um, you just make, have to make sure your inverter's on and that'll be pulling from the battery. So this thing can draw uh, quite a bit of power, which is why I didn't do that. I'd rather just let my lithium battery that it came with get drained down before I start uh, running out of battery on the, the trailer. Um, so you can get multiple batteries. Um, I did test this fully last night. First time I've actually fully tested how long will this thing run on a full charge. And uh, basically what I did is last night I uh, turned it on and kept it on sleep mode, which is kind of a low power setting, but still provides cold air. And uh, it stayed nice and comfortable. It blew about 61 degree uh, air the whole night. And it lasted for about six hours. Now I shut it off before it went completely flat on the battery, but knowing that it can run for six hours on that mode, it's generally long enough. And if you've got a second battery, you can go 12 hours. So if you're doing a one or two night camping experience, you should never have to get off battery. You can just keep it on the battery and not worry about plugging it in and actually uh, take advantage of it. Um, so just wanted to show everyone how that thing mounts. And you can probably see in the back, it sits flush with the back. There's actually ventilation holes back there that are cut out specifically for this unit. So it, it gives you the ability to um, put it in snug so it's not blowing hot air into the cabinet and uh, creating a heat pattern in the, in the trailer. So pretty cool. Uh, I have reached out to Off-Grid. There is one thing about this that is annoying and I, I learned the hard way. You really can't travel with this thing installed in the cubby hole. Even though they say they've tested it and they haven't had this problem. Um, I actually had this unit uh, first week I had it, when I took it out to Tyler to get it inspected, I um, went over some railroad tracks, which actually caused the vehicle to do one of these numbers. And when it did this, the trailer anyway, this unit fell out, completely out of the cubby hole. And by the time I got to my destination, I found it laying on the mattress. It actually hit the wall and scraped the wall a little bit on the way down. So that's something that they have to adjust. I do have a warranty claim. It could just be there's an L bracket that sits up in the back here that is kind of like this and it's designed to hold this thing in place but I don't think it's tall enough I think it just jumped right over that and came flying out because uh, I don't know if you can see it or not but there are bolts that the um, Zero Breeze sits on and it keeps it kind of stable right it won't go backwards anymore uh, and it's basically sitting on the same feet that connect to the battery so it, it's kind of an ingenious design but unfortunately it just doesn't seem to keep it secure for anything that pushes it this direction and this is actually the front of the trailer back this way. So um, when the trailer went like that, that's when I think this thing dipped out and fell down. So if you're doing any kind of off-roading or any kind of situation where you've got some steep inclines, this thing will fly out of there. So I've learned just to uh, go ahead and keep it out and uh, travel with it in, a, in a, you know, either laid down on the mattress or in, in my forerunner, and then I'll just install it when I get to campsite because I, I can't risk having this thing flying around in the cabin. Anyway, that's it for now. Hopefully uh, you guys found this informative. I'll keep adding these videos as long as you guys have questions or comments. And, uh, you know, happy to share my experiences as I learn more about this trailer. All right, thanks. Have a good day.